free overnight camping in Mississippi, cockroaches, and the USS Alabama Memorial Park. We have lots to share with you today. Let's go down that road. Hello, faithful people. I'm Orlean. I'm Gary. And as we continue towards the Florida Panhandle, just a hint, we are actually in Florida right now. And you'll be seeing more videos on that later. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, you'll want to do that right now. Gary and I just realized we're wearing the same color shirts today. <laughs> well, you realize that. I guess I had to be informed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> it's easy to find each other if we get lost. Anyway, we are finding that traveling through during COVID is still a little bit of a challenge, even in some of the states that are more open. But there's still plenty to see and do. So let's get started. Well, this is pretty sweet. And evidently it's common in a lot of the Mississippi rest areas, welcome centers. They have these nice little places for RVs away from where the semis are. So much quieter. Of course, it's no hookups. But wow. And security during the night for free. Gulfport, Mississippi, first stop is going to be the Visitor Center, Welcome Center. I checked ahead of time to see if it was open during coronavirus. Said it was, but not on the door. And just so you know, there's no place to park if you are in an RV because it's not going to clear this to go through and go out again. So it was supposed to be a really cool place to, to visit, but it's not open. <sighs> okay. But there's the ocean. We didn't plan to spend a lot of time in Gulfport because there are some storms coming, rain, mostly just rain, but we just didn't want to plan on spending a lot of time here. But it has kind of a historical thing for me is that my dad was in the Navy and he was stationed here in Gulfport. And we can't go by the, the, the base where he was. I don't even think it's the same place anymore. It sounds like a lot of things have changed, of course, because yep. that was during World War II, <laughs> so things have changed a lot in those years. Um, but anyway, I just thought it'd be kind of cool to see this, and the museum part of the visitor center was highly rated as a really neat place to see, and unfortunately, because of coronavirus, it was closed, and I had checked that ahead of time, and it said it was open. Don't believe everything you read. Okay, so we're gonna go along the ocean for a while before we get back on I-10. Ooh, if you see another one of these, pull over. Well, I'm gonna take something back with me from Gulfport. We stopped at a gas station with McDonald's and I got some orange juice. So I have this clean cup. I'm gonna scoop up a little sand. Doesn't look like there's any seashells. <laughs> you don't know what happened behind you. There was lightning. 
Oh my gosh, we gotta get out of here. Okay, I got my sand. We'll compare this to the sand in uh, Florida. Would have been fun to walk out on that pier, but it was very windy. <laughs> Very windy and chilly. Not what was predicted. Big parking area. And they have all these pullouts every once in a while along the road too. My mom would tell stories about Gulfport and when they were stationed there. And one of the things that she always remembers is about the cockroaches. <laughs> she said they were everywhere. They were in the grocery stores. <laughs> this is, you know, back in World War II time. And, um, and she said that they went to a movie theater one time and there'd be cockroaches jumping from people's shoulders. To other people's shoulders. <laughs> Such fun memories. <laughs> she did tell me about some of the beaches and things too, but um, I don't remember her mentioning a whole lot more about the whole experience. <laughs> Maybe it is still a problem. <laughs> Okay, let's get out of here. <laughs> this is the Alabama Welcome Center on I-10. Well, it was so nice to have a visitor center that was open. And we got not a lot of stuff, um, just some things we're interested in. We will not be going into the northern part of Alabama this time, but there are so many waterfalls in northern Alabama that we want to go see some other time. So I'm hanging on to this. And then this is the USS Alabama. You can go on it for a fee, but we found out we can also see it from a park that's very close to it. Um, they give you, they give us a $2 off adult admission. So that's nice. And I found out that people can actually sleep on that, on that ship overnight. I don't know how much it costs, but you can sleep on the USS Alabama. Battleship Park, three quarter mile. That's what we want. Oh, a tunnel. Let semis go through it so it's okay, right? Nope. I know, like tunnels. Mm. It's okay, we're going down underneath. Down Sorry, underneath this. what? I don't, I don't what are we going underneath? Whatever's above us. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. Water I see light. I see light. So you water dripping? No. Coast Guard plane. 
So it's four dollars if you just want to come and be in the park. If you want to be in the park and just look around, there's the Korea Veterans Memorial, Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Whoa. 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 What is this? Calamity Jane. Oh my goodness, that thing is humongous. Right now, I am underneath the nose of this humongous plane. It, uh, when it, it flew with a crew of six, weighed 450,000 pounds. The wingspan is 185 feet. The length is 157 feet and seven inches. Maximum speed, about 660 miles per hour at 20,000 feet. 10,000 miles. There are 84 500 pound bombs in the bomb bay. 12 750 pound bombs under each wing. Jeepers. Whoa. I guess Gary's fascination was more of the tanks and mine was with the planes. <laughs> He's way over there. a massive ship. Wow. Try and zoom in here and you can get a closer look at some things. Can you imagine how long it must have taken to build that? To design it? How much those, the noise from those cannons, oh my gosh. And they're all over on the sides. Wow. Here's the entrance to the ship. You can see some people walking around on there. Way over there. This is a stealthy looking thing. Now why would it have to have that pointy thing on the end? Imagine that taking off. I don't want to stand behind it too too close. <laughs> this is all part of the tour as well. If you buy tickets to go in on the ships, you can go on that one as well. That longer one, it's got on the other side of this plane. Dragon wagon.
cannot imagine what that must be like to be in that clear dome flying through the sky. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And it's such a small bubble. Scorpions. I never knew the helicopter blades on top folded like that. Oh my goodness, that one's so little, so short. This is the 9-11 Fallen Heroes Memorial and that those are representing the Twin Towers in New York City and it has the the story. About the attack. Global War on Terrorism. Closer look at the Korea Veterans Memorial. bridge is called Vickery's Bridge. Oh, 
all the countries that were in the war. Philippines, France, South Africa, Army, Navy, and all the names are down below. Navy Marine. Korean War. All gave some, some gave all, so that this torch of freedom could burn always. And the Air Force. Alabama Korean War Memorial. So those that served from Alabama in the Korean War. This is this memorial is for the unsung heroes. The canines an unheralded breed of soldier. Let all who read these words of gratitude and praise know that tens of thousands of Americans fighting men and women owe their lives to the deeds and courage of war dogs and their handlers. Further, let it be known that many breeds of dogs, large and small, served our nation in times of war, all going into harm's way with distinction and valor, unhesitating. Let us not forget these unsung heroes are soldiers too. These valiant dogs protect our military men and women through countless perils, give comfort in uncertainty, and share the suffering and the risks in time of war. Over the decades, many of these dogs have made the supreme sacrifice, giving their own lives to shield our armed forces and military assets from hostile acts. Canines and the armed services continue that noble tradition around the world today. This monument is dedicated by the patriotic people of Alabama for all to bear witness in remembrance to these faithful war dogs and their Alabama handlers. Those who leave this place should remember the deeds and sacrifices of these four-legged soldiers. Furthermore, see in every dog the unconditional loyalty inherent in war dogs and a glimpse of reflection of their soldier brothers' heroic actions. These teams unhesitantly fight for right and for our nation's freedoms. Lest we forget, we should hold them dear in our hearts and honor their courage. the Lower Alabama Vietnam Veterans Memorial. In Dad's honor, not forgotten, in memory of our dad served, saluting vets, welcome home, not forgotten,
to honor the men from Mobile and Baldwin counties who gave their all in the Vietnam War, their names are listed here. All gave some, some gave all. We are the men from Alabama who served in Vietnam but could not return. Remember us. Mama and Daddy are busy. Look at those little ones. Oh. They're just learning. Oh, they're so cute. Well, thanks for watching. We want to say thank you, a special thank you to our servicemen and women who have served our country. We really appreciate you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Check out our Facebook page, Rose of Faith. Leave a comment. Hit the subscribe button down below. Ring that bell. And then you'll be notified every time new videos come up. And until next time, God bless.